exhaustive search? What made Eric Ramsey the guy? Um, combination of things. One, we trust in the search and in the process, which is quite long and then very detailed. Um, we thought Eric was best suited in terms of, you know, intelligence. His kind of approach to football aligns the way I look at it and where we want Minnesota to go. His experience of uh, managing and being in the highest level possible in football. Um, both to learn from some of the coaches that he's been around, but also, you know, connecting and managing players from Cristiano Ronaldo to Casemiro. Um, the fact that he speaks uh, several languages is it was quite important for us as well because we see ourselves as a, you know, as a global club. It's a global sport. Um, his personal values very well connected, and you know, kind of we think of how we want to cooperate. Um, you know, it's overall just very impressive. How much of a win is this for the organization? A lot of people wanted this job, but he's obviously a rising star. We've seen the milestones, the fastest to get the certification. How much of a win is this for you to get him to come over? Uh, I think um, win. Uh, I think we're all happy that it's Eric, but again, I go back to the process. <coughs> there were some other very good candidates. Um, and ultimately it fell on him. We're really excited. I think it shows the strength of Minnesota United. It shows the strength of MLS that we're getting these, you know, up and coming, um, you know, whether it's players or uh, coaches. So we're excited. How do you look at the, the challenge of him? Obviously he's young. This is a new league, a new opportunity. Doesn't have a lot of head coaching experience at a first team level. What are the, the challenges with, with his hire? Uh, I think it's all potential. I don't see it as a challenge. I think it's a great opportunity for him to, you know, um, put put in place all the things that he's experienced and learned. Uh, and it's also not just Eric. Like he's a great support staff. Whether it's you know, uh, me, Cam, uh, all the people around. You know, again, I've said it from our first meeting. This is a collaborative effort, uh, and Eric is just a good addition to this. How big was the net that did you cast? Like how many candidates were you looking at initially, and then how did you narrow it? Um, how many did you narrow it down to? Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's open. I mean, anyone could have applied, even you, uh, if you wanted to. Um, but ultimately, after the kind of first re rank, we had a little bit more than a hundred from all over the world, um, assistants, high-level coaches, etc. We then, you know used uh, to the different data metrics. Um, we try to re-rank them in terms of style of play, uh, various KPIs that, that we want to, you know, use. Um, then there's, you know, I called a lot of them. Some of them weren't available, some couldn't come, some were too expensive, and it just kind of is a combination of things that ultimately then just narrows it all down to uh, the one that we have, and we're really happy having Eric Ramsey join us. How much can you tell how excited he is when you speak with him and the, the opportunity that he has in front of him? How excited is he to coach this club? Yeah, very. I, I met him in England, um, th th I think it was a week ago or something. Uh, we had dinner. It's, it's, he's really excited um, about both, you know, the actual league, but also Minnesota, the club. You know, I told him that uh, after interviewing every staff member and player, I know all 55 le restaurants you can go to. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, he's, he's really excited. What about the rest of the staff? Is that going to be up to him to decide, or how does the rest of the coaching staff come together? So it's, it's, an, it's a collaborative decision. Um, in the past, the way I do it is the head coach has the ability to bring one staff member, which will be this c the case uh, this time as well. Uh, which, when that name is is uh, confirmed, we will obviously make you aware, uh, and then there'll be ongoing discussions of how we fill it with the staff that we have here. Obviously, there's the the visa issue, but uh, when do you anticipate? Do you have an idea of when you might be able to be on foil? So they play Man City. I think it's the third. Um, hopefully, as soon as possible after that, um, and hopefully his visa doesn't take as long as it did with mine. Um, but look, we're in good hands, whether it takes two, three, four, five weeks. I have full trust in both my, uh, our players and, and the staff that are here today. So I said it from the beginning, it's a, it's a process. Uh, everyone is on board, so we're quite calm. 
How would you articulate your vision for the club and, and how you plan to implement it? Oof, that's a spot on question right now. <laughs> um, to try to summarize and make it simple, uh, I want us to be brave. Uh, I want us to show a bit of belief in what we're doing. And yes, we will adapt depending who we play or where we play, but the people should know that this is Minnesota United. I think that f you know, maybe the whole game of against Austin, specifically first half, kind of gives you a little bit of, of what I'm looking for. But ultimately, I think alignment from top to bottom, from owners all the way to academy. I think if you would walk in, I just tore, tore down a wall that was in separating academy to the first team. That one is gone. Um, and, collab and a collaborative environment, mm -hmm. so to make it simple. How have you seen uh, Camp sort of embrace the interim role with these guys? And do you see a scenario where he stays on once Eric gets settled in? Uh, yeah, Cam is, uh, uh, that discussion is to be had with him. I think he's been uh, great in embracing this role. In the beginning, you know, before preseason, we're talking, it's almost like a academy player gets a chance because the main <coughs> striker got injured and he's taking the opportunity and done a good job in, uh, um, you know, in a situation that is, from one perspective, uncertain from others full of potential. It depends on how you look at it. And he chose the potential path. Why is, uh, why is a pressing style your preferred way of playing? Uh, <coughs> it's not necessarily my preferred generally. It's when I go into clubs, I look at it. Each club has a kind of its, its own, own organism. Right? So I look at the geographic location, I look at the fact that we're four seasons, I look at our fans, I we spoke about like the history of Minnesota, you have a uh, iron state. Um, and I think I also analyze the players that we had. Um, mm -hmm. There's also quite a lot of data when you look of sustainable success, there's certain metrics. Um, it's also the opportunity or type of players that we can attract to where we are. So it kind of tends to be more of a you know, Liverpool slash Spurs mm -hmm. uh, way of playing versus uh, a Man City. I'm sure you had a chance to watch the game on Saturday. How did you feel the way the team played and, and the performance that you saw Saturday night? Um, excited. I think, you know, you mentioned two good players not being part of it. And the team showed it's about the team. It's not about one single player. Um, I always tell everyone if someone's injured, we just mentioned kind of camps. Uh, ability to step up. You had young players stepping up. Uh, I thought Sang Bing was great. Um, Fragapane, you know, players maybe last year didn't really play much. Um, you know, it's was, it was exciting. It's exciting to see. From the subs the other night and from, from Eric, you believe in youth? Um, I believe in quality. Um, and yeah, I do want to play younger, but sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. There will be, a, a, I would say, a better balance of, I guess if you want to call it youth. But for me, it's quality. I don't take uh, Luik as an example. Whether he's 19, 20, or 24 doesn't really matter. As long as they're good enough, they'll be in and around uh, the club. And age plays a part with, uh, with, with Eric in terms of being too young? Again, quality, I don't see him being too young, an issue I actually didn't really think about. I want a coach that's 30 or 40 or 50. I just want I want the best possible c person, and it tend to be Eric, or is Eric. Last week, I heard a lot of players and coaches using the words together and transparency. <coughs> we're going to defend together, we're going to go forward together, um, or things like uh, the way Cam Knowles was coaching, was very transparent. Um, are those things coming from Cam? Are they coming from you? Are they coming from Sherry? What, what's kind of, how does that precipitate? Uh, so I think when we spoke about alignment, one of the things where Sherry and I did align, uh, you know, is kind of both my personal values that tr kind of transcend into the club. I met all the players, the staff, even we had the conversation with owners, and it was be a good person, be positive, be pr professional, and be transparent at all times. And I think either, either even with you, if there'll be days where we disagree, I'll always be a good person, positive, professional, and transparent. So I would say it's a collaborative approach of not the way we want to attack wins, losses, ups and downs. How do you look at the recipe for building a roster to be successful in Minnesota? You talk about kind of the unique place, place that this club is in. 
the market? How do you look at kind of the full recipe to, to build a successful team? I think first and foremost, we have to know what we want. Like who are we as a club? What do we want to represent? The style of play. Once we kind of, you know, as we're putting those pieces in in place, we will have specific KPIs of how we recruit certain type of players, uh, whether it's more kind of technical analogies, what we call a squad balance, X amount of youth or X amount of older players. Uh, as those all things fall in place, I think we will be a, a competitive team. Will the club play in the US Open Cup? Uh, I think US Open Cup questions, uh, I, to be honest, right now don't know. I would hope so, but I don't know. I think that's a conversation to come from, whether it's league or US soccer. I know we're still in the primary transfer window, but how do you look kind of initially at, at the summer and what that could present? For the team? Um, first and foremost, uh, like we need to, again, relook of how we scout and recruit and align it, uh, and not just kind of potentially go for ad hoc. Um, signings, uh, but I, I think we're all really focused on the players that we have. I mean, you mentioned two players that are of quality that hasn't even played. You haven't played Ariaga, Puki just came. Uh, you know, you'll see uh, Bran, you got Harvey. Uh, we have a, a good, strong squad, and I think once Eric comes and everything kind of settles a little bit more in and around the first team, um, we'll assess and, and tackle the summer when it comes. I saw on Tuesday, Kedra Manchin and Fr Fred Emmings and at least one other Minnesota United two player in training. Will we be seeing more uh, of the two players joining the senior team in, in training? Yeah, so um, as you hear me speak, I don't see a player being an academy or MNFC two. For me, they're all Minnesota players. If you're good enough, you'll be in and around the first team. And whether you're 16, 15, I, I, it really makes no difference to me. Uh, so if Amos would come and say, hey, here's a 16-year-old, he's ready to get the opportunity, he gets the opportunity to, to train. Because you'll never really know until you give them that opportunity. Time for a couple more? What have, you, what have you learned on the job since you've been here that maybe were surprised or taken by that you maybe didn't expect once your feet were on the ground here? How good the media is in Minnesota. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and how good the weather is in the winter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very lucky. So it's a different global warming conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no surprises. Mm -hmm. I think what I've experienced um, has prepared me well. Um, I was going to say good people. That's not a surprise. I think it's resignated how Sherry is and the ownership group. And I'm just really excited. Are there other members of the... Um, kind of technical team is Hank staying on is there any other additions kind of on the sporting side uh, it's an on just like with players happy with the staff that I have mm -hmm. um, so my colleagues and then we look you know if we need to make improvements or additions or growth we will you know I do think I do see us uh, growing in the video analysis department uh, on the data side um, just had a great conversation with our nutritionist today so there's a lot of things that need to be um, kind of bring together and align so we can move forward. What's the favorite of those 55 restaurants? I've only sure. tried to, and so the, I told you about the restaurant, they come from players and staff. I asked them, give me your favorite restaurant. Um, I was surprised how many players said Olive Garden. <laughs> oh, I, I thought they shut Olive Garden down since I went to college. Um, 